for joining us for another episode of Black Coffee and Crime. This is episode 36. Uh, this week, we are going to talk about everything that's current in the news. Well, not everything, but a lot of things that have been happening over the last few weeks that we haven't been able to address. Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Um, 2020 threw us for a loop, and then 2021 came in and was like, hold on, I got you. So from, <laughs> you know, you know, more COVID cases, states opening up um, the states to business capacity, the COVID, the mass mandates being lifted, all of those things have led recently to several shootings um, and incidences, racial uh, incidences and stuff like that. And then um, we got a stimulus check and that went sour and it's just all bad. So we're going to talk about that this week. So thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Brandy, and we have another Brandy, Brandy W. and Jackie joining us, as always, every week on the show. Uh, we do want to give a little disclaimer. We're not law enforcement professionals. Um, we just do this because we like to talk about stuff and we're nosy. Um, if we say anything malicious or anything offensive, please let us know, but always be respectful. Um, so, you know, we don't dig too deep into people's lives we just go what we find on the public record so we're not trying to be malicious we're not trying to be mean so if we misspeak say something incorrect or you have more information to add you can always contact us at info at blackcoffeecrime.com or hit us up on facebook or instagram also black coffee no, excuse me black coffee and crime all right so let's go ahead with the church announcements and they are as follows um we got last week we had one of our choir directors get into it with one of his kids mm. this week we're gonna talk about one of the musical directors who uh <laughs> did something uh nasty so we're gonna we're we gonna talk about that now listen you got to have a certain amount of decorum when you are the music director because people are looking at you so we're gonna talk about mr trey songs in just a minute uh i don't know if he's appropriate to even be i, I, I i'm voting to sit him down you voting to sit him down he need to be sat down and count <laughs> well the brother brings a lot of you know he brings a lot of, to to the church you know he brings he's a lot of, he's an assistant assistant musical director slash youth choir slash every other anniversary and every 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 other uh, pastor and first lady anniversary so he ain't that well we'll talk about him in a second see what, what kind of decisions we should make about how he moves forward okay. uh, with the church um besides these mass shootings uh, we had a mass shooting um couple about a week ago and a lot of stuff going on so again you know even though mass mandates are being lifted and things like that still be mindful um be careful with your health be careful with other people's health and don't be you know don't fall into the media frenzy of um black people versus asian people yeah that's that's not this this that's not it, y'all. You know, so you, have, you always have one individual go against another individual, and that those things can be isolated incidences. They don't necessarily mean that you have an entire cultural race of people against another race of people, especially in minority communities. That no, that's not what's going on right here. So don't fall into that media frenzy. Don't fall into what the former Cheeto in Chief was trying to do and say that the China virus. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, so um, yeah. It's, um, be respectful to the next person and you know hopefully that will come back to you um anything y'all got for the church announcements any uh anybody on the sick and shut in list anybody uh bringing snacks to the church picnic next week what did we do <laughs> <laughs> no okay we we ain't have no picnic because ain't nobody gonna bring nothing and uh so you well we gonna have program for easter sunday yeah, we're going to have an Easter Sunday program. Now, we, we're not going to be on program for Easter Sunday. We're going to be visiting other churches okay. on Easter. So, so we got a thing at a visiting church. We got a thing at another So church. we're going to have to move uh, communion to the next week? Uh, you you know what? You can, you, can, you can partake of the body of Christ anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. 
And, you know, if they haven't communed at the visiting church, then go ahead. I'll be uh, under the worshiping with, with Cecil Reynolds Jones Church. Yes. Reynolds Jones, the Reverend Doc. <laughs> Okay. Reynolds Jones. Yes, brings the word. Good the selection. Mm -hmm. so, we'll so we won't she have no that. program on Easter. Oh, and week, uh, the week following Easter, we won't be on program, but we will be bringing you announcements as they come. So watch out for Instagram and Facebook because I'm quite sure there'll be something for us to talk about on the following show. Oh, so Jesus. those are the announcements as follows. Oh, Jesus. Uh, please obey your ushers and respect your past at all times. <laughs> There you go. Cecil. Cecil Jones. Reverend Oh. Yeah. Yes. All He's right. been preaching a long time. Okay. C.R. Jones. Since. Okay. C.R. Jones. Cecil yeah. Ricks. Yeah. He, he, they don't even really make him stand up no more. They just wheel him out <laughs> for certain starts. And he just sat there with the mic, the Bible. He got a Bible and on his lap. And on top of that, he got a handkerchief. And on top of that, he got his microphone. Oh, Jesus. You know the, you know, you know the order. If y'all been oh, I know. a long time, y'all know the order. <laughs> That's how they go. I know. So, yes, yes. All right. So let's talk about, now y'all wanted to talk about Trey songs. This is not, has nothing to do with Black Hawk and Crime. Has nothing to do with, with anything criminal. But as we always say, this is our show. We talk about what we want to talk about. So we are going to talk about Trey Songz real briefly. Um, so apparently he was doing a video shoot and he got a little risque and kind of grossed some people out. Now, about, what, two, three months ago, there was a video, a couple videos released of him having some relations. Um, and I don't know, he videotaped it, she videotaped, I don't know. Somebody. I, don't know. I saw both videos. Me too, so. Yeah, so it was out there. I still have them safe to my phone amen um I don't know. it's just research is what it is That's and it. um so recently y'all told me about y'all was grossed out y'all was like oh, let's talk about Trey songs and i said what, what? so did y'all watch the video the new video what he did i couldn't do it okay so i didn't want to recognize that? none of the fellow choir members myself so <laughs> but i just couldn't do it so Randy's completely grossed out. Watched what it. happened. Uh, Jack, I watched you, it. You watched it. Now, what were your feelings? Now, we're not going to tell you what happened just yet, but Jackie, what were your feelings about? Uh, my initial thought was, no, he did. That was my initial thought. First thought was, at the first, well, let, let's take me through the process of it. This is what my mom was saying. Damn, this is he is fine. Then I seen that. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so those, those are my initial thoughts. Just how attractive he was. That's my mind process first. Uh -huh. And then the act happened. And I was like, oh, no, he didn't. Who does he think he is? Okay, so. That was my thought process. Oh. The, the actor she's talking about is in the video. There are two women. He's standing up. And there are two women on either <laughs> one, <laughs> one on either does. side of him. And <laughs> he, 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 and I'm, uh, I'm assuming that, the, you know, they were mimicking um, a sex act with, you know, a couple people. And uh, he spit in the woman's mouth like it was long, you know. Did he wind it up? No, he just leaned over and it just, you know. He just he leaned went, over from, just from like this like, high up. Yeah, he was standing like that up. She was, she, and was leaning. she was, you know, she was on her knees, but standing, you know, like Did tall. he wind it up before the spit? I don't know what he did in his mouth before the spit came out, but it was just like, a long... Drop that went in her mouth. Now y'all think that's close. yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. You know, I I do not like spit. I I don't like it. I mean, I could put the finest spit ever, but if he has too much spit in his mouth when we kiss, it's over. I can't. I can't do spit. It's just. Well, when Brandy, she made her point about it. I get that. I actually get it. Because if that's what you're asking for, if that's the kind of naughtiness 
and nastiness that you do. Right. And that's what you're going to be that's into. Not that's not Personally. Freddie. Okay, so but you have some people who think that certain sexual positions are nasty. Um, yes. That oral sex is nasty. So it's all it's all relative, you know. Listen, listen. According to the Christian Bible, if you're doing it for any other purpose, is a then procreation, then it's wrong. Yep. I see wrong. a video on TikTok of men who said that if you suck someone's breast, that's that's a sin. So it's all subjective. Well, these people fade up rules. I mean, that's the, they don't say well, the, that. The, the, the basic the Bible. basic standard, the basic standards of the Bible is if you ain't married, you ain't supposed to be doing it. Period. And you're not supposed to be doing nothing other than the basics. So once we already going outside of basics, so what, what says that the, it says the marriage bed is undefiled, meaning you can do whatever you want to do. Exactly. But I'm saying this one right here, <laughs> right here. I don't, I don't do spit. I don't do spit. I just can't do spit. I can't. I can't do it. Oh, I can't either. Here but about I... in COVID, we do not need to be doing spit. They should have masks on. Well, what if they've been tested, Brand? I'm just saying, I'm not down with spit. And, now, I, you and, and I get that, but I'm just saying, spit I is wasn't. Where I the line. I draw the line at the spit. I wasn't grossed that way. I wasn't grossed out. I mean, it was, I mean, I don't necessarily want anybody to do that to me. In their mouth? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey. Again, I don't necessarily want that to happen to me, but yeah, I don't it, want that to happen to me. Didn't I was like, oh, that's y'all just gonna. But put you that know how I head. feel about spit. Yeah. But you're the one that brought it up to me. No, it was Jackie. I thought it was you. It was no, Jackie. It was you. It was you. Was it me or was it you, Jackie? It was you. Um, and then uh, Jackie let me, put it in the group let me, chat. Let me, let me check. <laughs> but I think Brandy, you started that because I was like, "What are we talking about?" Oh, and then Jackie followed up. With yes, we gotta talk about it's all. Where do you BW said we have to talk about it? Oh so. gosh, I must it must have been a weak moment. <laughs> <laughs> Did I already take my medication? I don't know what time. No, I'm gonna take a study in this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what time of day you said that, but you said it, and that's why we're talking about it today. So if you haven't seen the video, I'm not gonna post the video. Um, you might be able to find it. You, you, if you want to see any video that is supposed to be inappropriate, go to Twitter. Yeah, they don't care. Oh, they have, don't care. I have some Twitter videos uh, saved. My God. Well, I say they don't care. I, okay, so you see the viral videos, or you see, you're on TikTok or or Instagram or Facebook, and they will censor out those videos. But you'll they'll say go to Twitter, like you know, somebody mm -hmm. in the comments will tag, say go to this, you know, go to Twitter. And I'm thinking that the link should be interrupted or something. You go to Twitter, you go. It's right there, just right there. Like, like um, a couple months ago with the Busted Challenge uh, videos. Oh my! Oh, some some post lights weren't dark enough. Is what you're saying. We'll put it this way: some people went all out for the bus challenge. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm talking about all out. Oh, that I'm thinking about the the silhouette thing. No, they weren't even trying to hide. There was some with the silhouettes too, but for the most part, it was. It was but but for the most, the bus challenge, I'm talking about all all people. So, I don't need everybody to mean all that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's it on Trace on. So we talked about it. So we're going to move on from there. Um, uh, let's see here. So um, one of the news stories that I saw on the Neighborhood Talk. Now, for whatever reason, the Neighborhood Talk seems to be a good source of crazy news on Instagram. So if y'all not following the Neighborhood, y'all need to. Uh, exactly. But I initially saw this story on the Neighborhood Talk on Instagram. And this was a story out of Indianapolis where a man is accused of shooting a seven-year-old girl, killing mm -hmm. a seven-year-old girl and three other adults because he wanted $700 out of his ex-girlfriend's stimulus money. Yep. Now this, uh, 
This was what, March 16th. Um, so um, just last week, um, the, this is, I'm reading a story from USA Today. Uh, his name was Malik uh, Half Acres, 25. He killed, excuse me, Anthony Johnson, 35 years old, Daquan Moore, 23, Eve Moore, 7, and Tamika Brown, 44. Um, this, this, the person, he shot another person who was his um, daughter's mother. He shot her and she did survive. She shot. He shot her in the back. She survived. But it's her daughter. The seven-year-old was her daughter who mm -hmm. uh, was also killed. Over $700. And she keeps- $700 home. doesn't go anywhere these days. It doesn't go, it's not going to go. She, well, she tried to offer him, for, first of all, she's been taking care of the kid. Just her. Right. She's been doing it alone. And she, here he is coming to man that she give him some money. So she's like, look, I'll give you 450. That was just so he would leave her alone the prior day. He wasn't saying, so he talking about, no, you gonna give me more than that. So she was like, okay, well, this is what I'm offering. So he got added to the left and came back uh, and, and made it. He had already made the demand for the 700, but she was trying, like she was trying to give him Where compromise. She she's like, look, I'm giving you something. You don't deserve that, you know, but He took the baby, um, dropped the baby. Well, he took her, the, he did shoot the baby mama, but she survived, obviously. Yeah, no. it says here in this article that he told the investigators um, that after he shot everyone in the house, he took the money, um, his daughter's mother's purse, which is the survivor, and her car before he left. Um, he's been charged with four counts of murder and one count of attempted murder, one of robbery, you know, for the car. Um, thank sweet baby Jesus that he, their daughter, she was six months old, was found at um, a cousin's his house. Sister. Yeah, his, actually his sister. His, his physical his sister. sister yeah. had the baby at the time. So she was it, safe. It was the baby at the house and then he took the baby to the cousin's so the baby was no, already the baby was already over there. They, that's where they, they found the baby over there. Mm -hmm. um, no, actually, in the article... I, well, I was saying in the article, it says that when he took the he car, the baby, baby the baby. Yeah, he took the baby and dropped the baby off. The sister told the police that her brother, this is a quote, had knocked on the door, came inside, dropped off the baby and all the baby stuff before leaving. They should have charged him with kidnapping. Yes, they should have. Yeah, it was his own child. But the thing is, you... You didn't care nothing about your child because you, you didn't keep your child with the money. You dropped your kid off with the with the cut with the cousin. Well, if this that your child, you should have your child. And he admitted he about his child and, and gave about details as well. Uh, uh, we I mean we can already assume that he didn't care about these kids, that kid, in, in any kid, because you shot a seven year old. Like you went into the house so angry over seven hundred dollars. Right that you shoot you basically annihilate this woman's family over seven hundred dollars you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison for seven hundred dollars was he hooked on that narcotic do we know um they didn't say anything about it they was on anything i mean according to the picture and i'm just going to send this to you right now um let me get this to you i mean he looks a little um, he looks a little he, so he, he looks like this way if you saw him outside of the store so you got oh lord what do you think oh, he, he 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 looking weary i'll tell you yeah. that he's very weary yeah yeah like if you saw him outside of the store you would you would automatically assume like i need to go the other direction uh-huh and he looks in this you in that picture from this article he looks deranged i will post this article in the um the notes um on youtube um he had a restraining order from last year, um, he threatened to call her. Basically, they had a very tumultuous relationship. Mm -hmm. So him acting out like this would have not been um, foreign to uh, the survivor. I just, w when did we get to a point where 
it's so easy to take someone's life over the smallest dispute. Like, like it's not even taking my dispute. life, taking two lives. Your life is gone. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, and and then I mean, and he almost left his child with no parents. Mm -hmm. But in in essentially, maybe you did leave that child without parents because. This woman has also lost her brother and her other baby. And you put that already the survivor's guilt and then you're going to add a mother's guilt because I brought this person into my daughter's life. Yeah. You know, so you, you have all of that. So I just wonder like her mental state, what is her mental state going to be after this? You know, um, and she tried to compromise with this man and I just... I just don't, it, it's, it's very scary. Um, you, you know, you all are married. I'm not married. And, um, I have a girl child and I really didn't heavily date anybody for years and years and years and years and years after my daughter turned a certain age. Cause I was like, I don't know this man. I don't want him around her. You know, if I was seeing anybody, it was way outside of my home. Like you're not allowed to come here all of that because of that reason like i don't know you i don't know um your family history i haven't spoken to that aunt at the family reunion who don't like nobody who tells everybody's business that's the person you need to talk to because she's going to tell you that boy's not right he done did this mm -hmm. done his, or that girl has done this this that and the other we don't get to know people like we should anymore yeah. And the next thing you know, you have something like this. And I'm not saying that this is common and that this happens all the time or every time. But it happens. One, but happening one time is way too many. And yeah. the thing is, it's probably not even about the money. It's all about <clears throat> That maybe it's probably rejection. It's definitely, I, I definitely think no that longer, rejection plays a part. You can no longer control this person because she's done. She's finished. Yeah. And so you're angry about not having that control. Yeah. And, and nowadays, a lot of times, I'm saying a lot of times in relationships, yeah. I don't know if that's true for this one, but I'm just saying a lot of times, a lot of times that's the case. Person decide, the person or decides that I'm done with this. I'm not dealing with this anymore. And the part, you know, that control, you the thought of losing that control over this person is lost. Is, yeah. Because that just honestly, lose. You know, the person that, that rejects you in the end, that you've done the most wrong to, is probably the person that cares about you the most and, or has shown you the most care. And for whatever reason, people turn on that and betray that trust and betray that care. And then when you get, when, when you get tired of it and you let them go, like you said, Brandy, now I've lost control over you because you no longer have that affection for me. So I can't use that against you. I can't guilt you and understand well, you're the only person in my life who loves me and cares for me. Now I don't care. And they see that as rejection. They don't ever want to take responsibility or accountability for what they have done to they you. They don't. That is so true. To, you know, for you to let them go. It's all it's all about, well, you said you would love me unconditionally. And I did. But loving you unconditionally doesn't mean I have to love you all the time through this. But at the time when I did love you, it was unconditional. It's just I no longer feel that way now. You know, it's crazy how they it's crazy how they think like that too. It, it, it is so bizarre to think, okay, well, yeah, I treated you like this, but I thought you said you loved me, right? So like, aren't you supposed, supposed to, to deal with right it? Ride or die. You're supposed to. Aren't you supposed, supposed to deal to with it? No. Yeah. But you know, I talk about the things that you did that led up to this person no, leaving. We're not doing that. Why, if it was good, she would be there. Mm. Why? Why is she leaving? Let's talk about that. What did you do? Mm -mm. It's always they're not gonna take that. accountability. No, they're not gonna take accountability. It's mm -hmm. always they left because you or you left me because you don't love me or you left me because you love somebody else. But no, I yeah. don't. I left. It's me. manipulative. All these things. It's, it's the emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. And you know when 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 a person gets tired of that or recognizes that they are being manipulated, this is. This is prime reason why a lot of women do not leave abusive relationships. And talk about it. I know that first thing. Better talk because about it. Because if you're if you haven't been in a, an abusive relationship or you haven't seen it firsthand, if you haven't been inside 
of that relationship in some way. As an adult, I understand that the reason why women don't leave is because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Because if I stay, the violence continues, the manipulation continues, but if I leave, the violence is going to increase, increase. exponentially and he might kill yes, me. Well. He might kill me. So you stay just so you can eke out a little bit of your lifespan because this person really might kill me. You know? I mean, you got someone who, who, who is physically abusive and all you got to tell them to stay away from you is a piece of paper. They do not care about that piece of paper. That paper. They don't care about the cops at that moment because in that moment they're enraged because how dare you? And if I can't have you, nobody gonna have yeah, you. Heaven forbid you and try to move on. Don't don't you dare move on. You are supposed you gonna be with me? It, it's it's crazy. All that it because is, of their insecurities. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry for this crinkling, y'all. We're just gonna interrupt. This is an unsolicited <laughs> um, announcement or advertisement for Mother hit it, hit it. Circus Animal Cookies, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, I found these at the store last night, and they're so very special. I haven't had these in years, so. That's what I'm eating. <laughs> so that is an unsolicited advertisement. I've not been paid. Actually, I paid a whole dollar for that bag. So, <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. But yeah, I think that's why a lot of women don't leave the relationships, and we stay. We and I'll say we we stay in them, and it's out of fear. It's out of fear. You damn if you do, and you damn if you don't. You hope two things happen to an abusive man. He drinks himself to death. Oh, somehow dies or goes to jail I'm telling you you hope he dies yes you do or goes to jail yes you do because that's the only way you're really going to get away from this man is he have death or jail those two things have to occur because he's never going to get right he's not going to cure himself he's not he don't think anything's wrong with him because I do believe in my heart of hearts that abusers are narcissistic and they don't think they've ever done anything wrong. And they're gonna change long enough just for you to pay it. Long Please enough for you back. to just be like, okay. And when we say abuse, please know it does not have to be physical. Emotional and mental abuse is just as strong to me as physical Absolutely. abuse, in my opinion. And this is so, not true for every person who's abused. Yeah. So we're just to have a conversation and speaking in general terms. So if, you know, if you've had a, uh, incident or lived in a life where this has happened to you but not in this way we're not trying to be offensive or tell you how it happens because we don't know you so we can't yeah. possibly be talking about you specifically um so yeah um, i was watching something earlier um where it was uh uh they were in court but it was via zoom because the quarantine Yes. And it had the judge, the prosecutor, the lady. It was a, a domestic violence case. And the uh, boyfriend. And, you know, they were all. And the woman looked really nervous. You know, she was looking. Every time she said something, she would look. She would look. And the prosecutor stopped and said, I have a feeling that um, they're both in the same place. Yes. So she, she was like, told the lady to give her address. And she was like, I'm at home. She said, give your address. She gave her address. They asked the guy where he was. He gave some different address. She says, well, the police are knocking on the door right now. Can you please go yes. get the door and take your phone with you. The she judge goes, immediately thought, recognized something. What is that? What did you see the, pro the, the prosecutor or, the, yeah. or the noticed. You, you seen it? Yes, I saw the video. The judge yeah. sent the police to that address immediately because he, he was there crazy. with her he was in the house with her while they were arbitrating court proceedings because of covid so he wasn't supposed to be anywhere near her he had, he had bonded out on this domestic violence charge he was in the house with her while they're both supposed to be in court and he was not supposed to be near anywhere. You're probably terrified absolutely and then he comes back on her phone it's like sorry i lied and the judge is like the judge is like, um, you know, your bond is revoked, all this stuff. Because the police came into the room where he was. And then it went off camera and then he came back on her phone. It was like, and I mean, she was nervous the whole time. Looking at me that length. It was crazy. 
Y'all find it, please send it to me. Yeah, I did but, see that. I mean, from how she was acting, it seems as not necessarily that she was afraid of what she was going to say because he was there. She may not, not even wanted him there, but, you know, he was there. He might have forced his way in and said, we have court today. I have to be at court. You're going to, you know, we're going to do this. But you're right. The prosecutor, prosecutor was like, it looks like they're in the same house. Good job for him. Yeah. And I mean, attention. There, I don't know if they shortened the video that we saw or that they put out, but I don't know when that judge ordered the police to get there or how close they were. He must have been moving quick. But the, the, the judge said, go answer the door. So there, wait, she stopped. She the prosecutor stopped it. It was like, um, I I believe her life is in danger. I believe that he's in the home with her in a different room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, please! And he told him to take his phone. He said, "Okay, you have the address. Go take your phone outside and show me the address." He's like, "Oh, I can't. Only my phone's on two percent, and I have to keep it plugged in." What y'all see this on? Just random. I, I saw it on Facebook. And I saw it on YouTube this morning. Yeah, I saw I saw I think I saw it on Facebook initially or maybe even Twitter. Um during this last week. Um I saw it. Um but yeah, I mean the police were there immediately. Um but can you imagine you're in the house with your abuser? I mean it's bad enough that you have to be in court across the room from your abuser, but at least you have uh law enforcement personnel there. But this person who bonded out were abusing you is in your home as you were testifying. I, I can't. Okay, I found the, it. The sheer audacity, audacity of people. I'm gonna look at it. <laughs> I found it on YouTube. That was easy. Okay. It was in Detroit, I think, or something. Something like that. All right. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, because <laughs> this is just, but y'all, we can't possibly bring all of the news and current events every week because there's just so much stuff going on. So we really just kind of pick and choose what we talk about. And then, mm -hmm. you know, as we speak about it, as we talk about it, have conversation, we'll kind of throw in other things that pertain to that. Um, last week, there was a shooting in Houston. And I get this. And is trying to get into her car. The police show up start shooting at the suspect but start shooting at him as he's in front of her her driver's door window her driver's door and they shoot her one-year-old son in the head are you that hungry for a kill today that you start shooting an innocent people bystanders victims pay the price for this so this happened in houston um as uh, March 16th, Crazy. the article from CNN is as of uh, March 16th. Um, so the shooting takes place on March 3rd. Uh, uh, Daisha Small, she was pumping gas and uh, she saw the police cars. Her son, the one who was shot, his name was Legend. He was in the backseat of the vehicle and a man got into her car at the gas station. And she wouldn't give him her car. Uh, she wasn't going to leave without her son. And um, she, was fire not, she wasn't in the car when they, when they started shooting, but she was near the car. Was it's firing is there off? Anything, is there anything such a thing as a standoff? Like, can you ask the victim? Is there anybody in that car? Um. So the 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 man who who jumped in the car is thirty years old. Um, he was already being chased by the police when he jumped out of the car. Um, that he had crashed. So it was it was a police chase. He jumped out of the car and that's when he jumped into hers. Are they just so narrow minded that they just like you don't even you're so on getting this guy that you don't realize that there's innocent people or do you not care about those innocent people? I don't care about the innocent people. Just want mm -hmm. them the police chief are but you just wildly shooting. Yeah. The police chief lied. Hmm. He says that they feared for the mother's safety. You didn't know the mother. She, you didn't know she was a mother, so you didn't fear for the mother's safety. Um, a, one of our officers discharged his, this is a quote, uh, discharged his duty weapon, fatally striking the suspect, 
Sadly, baby legend was also struck. Officers at the scene immediately rendered first aid to legend. See, what bothered me about the chief, what, what he did is, see, at first, he originally said the baby wasn't even in the car. That's what he originally said, so that the baby wasn't in the that. car. In that CNN article, he said that that um, originally the baby wasn't in there. That's what he said. That's, that's what the chief said. But then he later on turned around and said, we hit the baby in the car. First of all, she's pumping gas. You think she's sitting there pumping gas with a baby in her arms? Is that what you, is that what you think? Because obviously she don't want to leave her baby in the car, so she's pumping gas at the pump because she don't want to leave the baby. That's obvious. Like her car, but it, that's it, it, obvious. Yes, you don't, you don't pump your gas with your baby on your hip. Um, so I'm like, he just lied. Even if you took your baby in the store with you to pay, you put your baby, you put your baby back in the car, back in the, in the thing. Nobody wants to be holding the baby and pumping gas. Pumping gas. I mean, if for no other reason except for convenience because a one-year-old is squirming all over the place he don't want to sit on your hip while you're doing it and then the feet's going in the baby's face um yeah yeah it says executive um assistant police chief troy said that legend smalls was not even in the car uh when it took place so it could be talking about the mom they didn't put her first name so how, if he said the baby wasn't in the car how'd the baby get shot because these cops you're trying to cover all up about me. protecting themselves and all about protecting the blue and they speak before they think they speak before they have all the facts they try to cover up everything so everything goes away um but we are in the age of media social media and we have amateur investigators and people okay watching who are like nah they was a baby in the car and they they, they stood there and talked to them and they did this and they did this and this so when all of these things start coming out, it's no longer the 70s and the 80s or even the 90s when you could do, when the police could do anything and no one saw it, or if they did see it, you know, you didn't have to say nothing. Nowadays, you have witnesses everywhere. And the culture that we live in now, everybody has their phone out. And as soon as you see a cop car, you pick that joint up and you start to record. And that's because you never know what you might see. You don't know whose wife you're gonna save. You don't. You don't know if you. No. You know what. What you're gonna find in this video. Mm -hmm. See, my even my son. Um, I want to say like a month and a half, maybe two months ago, he got pulled over by cops. Not only did he go on live, he called me on the live. So I'm like, what's going on? Like, why is my phone blowing up? Why am I getting tagged in Instagram? So I pop on Instagram and I like to hear his mom. Just letting you know, what you told me, I sure did the hell tell you, you turn that camera on immediately. Yes. So we know even if I don't see nothing, I can hear. And they want you to want to hear it. Turn the your turn your camera off. Turn your phone oh, they told him to turn I, it off. No, I don't have to. If you're not gonna do anything to me that is uh illegal or incorrect, then you shouldn't have to worry about giving me this ticket, sir. She was not, demanding. He business? was demanding that my son turn his camera off. And I was yelling in the background, he don't have to turn his phone off. If you're going to give him a ticket, give him a ticket. Why does he need to turn his phone up? I'm going to stay on this phone until you give him his ticket. Well, yeah. ma'am, I don't want to hear none of that. No, because my son is scared right I'm now. not, he's not turning. I said, don't touch that phone. You better go on and let him give you a ticket and you go ahead and go about your business. He's in Houston, by the way. Um, let him go and give you a ticket. I'm not turning off. You're not turning off my phone. I'm staying. I saw a story, similar story to that. I believe this was in Arkansas and I could be wrong. But uh, a guy was driving a U-Haul truck and he got pulled over by the state police. Uh, he was a law student actually. Uh, and he, he gets pulled over and he calls his dad. Now I don't know how he called his dad or you know if it was a similar situation as your son, but he called his dad and you know he's, he's receiving some, you know, some social media flack for calling his father, but listen, He's, he did that because he said he was scared. He did not want to be shot. Listen, maybe the people who are uh, talking about him on social media don't have a daddy, don't have a grandfather, don't have an uncle or somebody that they can call because you know, you just feel secure. When you are in a tight situation, you feel more secure when your parental figure is on the phone with you because they can calm you. They maybe can speak to whoever right. you know is in front of you on your behalf. Um, but, I called George. George is my father, very involved in my life. 
when uh Raleigh police pulled Jackie over in front of my parents' house, soon as he hit them lights, I was Dad, come outside, please. Right. And my daddy flew outside at three in the morning, standing there. I need you to protect me, Daddy. Make sure you watch it. Exactly. What's going on? Um, so I mean, this this is the type of trauma that, that we deal with that that happens. And I mean, this woman is a victim two times. A victim of a carjacking, okay. a victim of police violence through her son. Now the baby is is in uh, critical, actually intensive care. He's had ten seizures, mm. um, and this oh, was baby. as of the sixteenth. So uh, you know, more than a few days ago. Um, it says that the bullet was removed. They re did remove a bullet um, on the right side of his skull, but he still has uh, the bullet fragments in his head. This is one See, I can't even think a whole lot into these stories because I just won't be no good. I just, I like, I have sons. When the police get behind me and they stay too long, I'm nervous and I know I haven't done anything wrong. We have a, a mutual I, I friend, get nervous. Brandy, oh my God. That, that posted something like that on Facebook today. He said some, I'm paraphrasing, something to the tune of, I have a license, I have insurance, I don't have a record, I'm a good person, yet when the lights flash, why does that scare me? And he I get scared. It's trauma, and I'm and I totally pa paraphrase his post, but that's what he said. Was like I have a license, valid license. I have insurance. This is my car. I don't have a record, but let them pull up behind you, and I'll you be get terrified. nervous because you you know they don't need a reason to pull me over. They find a reason one, and the reason that they pulled me over, or the the, the ticket always was like resisting arrest. Well, what was the reason why you put me on in the first place? Because if I had a broken tail light, it's still a broken tail light. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if I had, you know, whatever, if my tent was too dark or my muffler was too loud, my tent is still dark with resisting arrest, but it's never that. It's never the, there's never a real reason why they pulled you over. Um, one of the things I learned in California, I was coming down uh, Interstate 15 uh, through Norco one night, Brandy. I don't know if you remember how dark Norco used to be. And they, you know, this is before East Bell got there or whatever. But coming down 15 through Norco, there's like basically no lights, no lights. Even if you're on 15 or even on the side on the side street like Limonite or whatever, no lights. And I got pulled over. I don't know why I got pulled over, but the first thing I did, I called 911. And I told them where I was and I'm being pulled over. Can you tell me why I'm being pulled over? This is my license plate number. They could not say why I was being pulled over. The, the 911 dispatcher said, and this, this is before smartphone, so put me on speaker. The officer comes to the door, I mean, to the window. The 911 operator asked that officer, what his name was and what his badge number was. Because that's a call that cannot be deleted. And when they stop you, they have to call that in. That has so to he did not in. call it in. There has to be probable cause for that. He hadn't even called it in? He did not call that in. He just stopped me. And at the time, the reason why I did that, there was like a, there was some guy that was uh, uh, in, where I lived, there was some guy who would be stopping, who would stop women impersonating a cop. Okay. And at the time, Brandy, I was working in Montclair. So I had to drive from Montclair all the way to Riverside. So he was stopping people and he was impersonating a cop. So they were like, these are things that you should do. Like call 911, you can stop, call 911. Just so happened, it actually was a cop who stopped me. And the reason why he stopped me was because I was by myself on this freeway and it was dark and he was stopping me. And I was like, but that's not fair. Like, I'm scared. You know, like, you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of like a welfare mm -hmm. check. Are you okay? Cause I wasn't driving real fast. It was, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning for me coming from work. So it was kind of like, he was like, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, you good? And this is before I can say that, you know, there were a lot of police shootings. I don't, I don't know if we're, we're experiencing a lot of police shootings because we know about them. Well, they weren't publicized. They weren't, they weren't being publicized. Reported. So you really didn't have, you had a, you had a, a you were a little scared of the police, but you didn't have this great fear. You know what I mean? Like you were wary of them, 
You know, I was always fearful. But not so. scared. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, but I called I called 911. And they she asked the badge number, asked him his name and his badge number, and she, he had to tell her why he stopped me. So if I ever get stopped, I'm calling 911 because I want that person on the line. I want, you know, I want that recorded that she was stopped at this time. I don't know why I was stopped. Can you tell me why? It's a non-emergency call. And you can say, can you tell me why I just got stopped? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's just those, these, we don't, we don't we're never gonna run out of stories like this. No, we're unfortunately. Never run out of stories, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, at, let's add baby legend to the, um, the sick and shut in list and the prayer line. Cause you know, even in recovery, he's going to have a lot, a lot to deal with going forward. Cause he's at this age, he hasn't developed yet. And he has a, a brain injury and he can still be traumatized. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's crazy. We don't, you don't know because your child is so young, but even babies hold trauma. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that the police department, like there was nothing, this goes to the training that we keep asking them for, like crisis training. Like you have a suspect who jumped in someone's car. There are people around, you don't shoot. You can't say I feared for the mother's safety. So we shot him. I feared for the mother's safety. You would have shot the mother. Be- you would have shot her. I mean, because at the time you didn't know she was. It's obvious he didn't have, it's, it's obvious he didn't have a gun because if he did, he would have shot her. Right. So there's no like protocol, like, okay, he don't got a gun, but he's a, you know, he's running. What do we do? And he I know firing, car. multiple people firing bullets can't be hit. Right. And you're at a gas station. At a damn gas station, you are shooting actively at a gas station. You could have blown the entire block up. <laughs> Blew everything up. And this is, if we keep talking about this crisis training as normal citizens we are not trained in that it is not our job to diffuse a situation like that it is y'all job to diffuse situations you guys have an active car chase he crashes jumps in somebody's car and the first thing you do is shoot i, I just mm. i don't understand i don't understand i don't get it um right now right now Brandy calls it, you know, well, I won't say Brandy because everybody calls this man the ambulance chaser. All right, guys. Yeah. Um, we're not supposed to be doing crisis training. And this is this is what we've been asking the police for, for police reform. And these bills get denied by Republicans every single time. Um, because I don't know if y'all know that the Supreme Court ruled like maybe last year or the year before that the police don't have a constitutional right to protect you until you are in their custody. So you think that protect and serve really means nothing, something, it means absolutely nothing because they are not under any obligation to protect you until you are in their custody. So before you're in there, before you are arrested or they take possession of you, they can pretty much do whatever they want to do to you. They have carte blanche to do whatever they want to do to you because you're not in their custody, so they don't have to protect you. What are you here for? What are you here for? Just be jailers and bailiffs, but what are you here for? Why, why are we paying for you to be out in the street to do what? Because you don't, now the vast majority, I will say, I'm gonna say it, like the vast majority of cops are out there with a good purpose. Like I am here to protect the sir. But for those who really don't care, <laughs> those are, they don't have to do anything for it. I don't know if this is why these guys act like cowboys and 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 go out and just start shooting without like investigation. Thank you. And everybody's a threat. Like this is crazy. We are just it's it's absolute fucking chaos. It's crazy. So again, um keep a baby legend in your prayers and hopefully um he makes it through. And um, his mom makes it through as well because she's gonna need a lot of therapy along with that. A lot. A lot. All right. So the big story is the shooting in Atlanta. So one of the things I've seen a video, a small video on TikTok, was this lady said, "You know, 
when the world has opened back up because you start seeing shootings again. So they're letting kids back into school. You're gonna start seeing school shootings. They looked at the mass mandate. You saw the mass shooting in Atlanta, eight people. Eight people. So if you haven't heard, um, guy goes into, uh, what was it called? The Gold Spa in Atlanta. And he actually opened fire at three locations that day in his effort to rid himself of the temptation of his sex addiction is what he said. And he, six of his victims were Asian. And the perpetrator of the crime said, it's not a hate crime. And the police have been like, it's not a hate crime because he said it wasn't. Did the sheriff, didn't the sheriff say he was, he had a really bad day? He had a, he yes, had, he had a bad day. He had a bad day. Let me try to find where this man That's, is. That was what he, that was the excuse for the reason it happened. He day. was having a bad, a bad day. day. Um, sh- I want the, the, I found one of, one of his quotes on the, on um, an article from BBC. So let me see if I can find that one. But yeah, he was having a bad day if this happened. What? What kind of sh- who who says that? I I um I just don't understand the apologists when it comes to racism and white supremacy. Uh when things are just out in front of your face, you still feel like we need to explain away in the most innocuous way possible why someone did what they did and it is always he you know he's a good boy he was and that's what they're, that's that's the narrative that they're running now he was in church mm-hmm. and he he ran the this choir and he was involved in this we don't care and not at all jim jones was a preacher we don't care no Chris Dorner was a police officer. Y'all didn't care about Chris Dorner when he went on his rampage. We don't care. Yeah, we need to talk about him too. We don't. We don't care what what who you were prior to this. What did you do that? What did you decide to do that? Because if you were that Christian and that good of a person, then you would have thought seventeen times before you did what you did that day. Right. Um. Agreed. Oh my gosh. I can't find the BBC article with the quote from the long quote from the the police officer who I believe he was like the assistant chief or something like that. Um, let's see. What did he say? This was from the Cherokee County Sheriff's Deputy. Um, he said that yeah he he did the he carried out the killings after a really bad day. So the check captain was it Jay Baker? I'm trying to look to see if I have in my notes him saying something. So um, the this guy um, last name is Long. He was charged with killing eight people at three Atlanta area massage parlors on Tuesday evening. Uh, had been a customer at least two of those spots. This is from the New York Times. So they fed your sex addiction? Um, he killed four women at one spa that he had, he had been mm-hmm. in, uh, um, The Atlanta police said that they are still investigating all possible motives for the kill. Huh? My thing, my thing is if he had a sex addiction and he's killing these women because of his sex addiction, what any woman matter, right? Matter, right? The grocery store, the lady at the bank, the lady on the corner jogging, right? If it was just about sex addiction, I mean, in your city, you know where the prostitutes roll, so. Was it really about your sex addiction? Because then any woman would be grounds yep. to be killed. 
Say Brandy. And because it was targeted at women, it's still a hate crime. So if you want to say that it's not a racially motivated hate crime, let's say it's a gender motivated hate crime, it's still a hate crime. You targeted women because you were tempted by them sexually. That is still a hate crime. Let's double down and say it's a hate crime because it's against Asian women. It's still just, it's, I ain't never known of, out, of, out of all the cases I've read and went through, I've never heard nobody just randomly killing Asian women because they have a sex addiction. Especially if you didn't in, in, engage, did he engage in that? I didn't see anything saying he engaged he in that. He said that he was a patron of two of the three spas. Um, right, so that doesn't, that means he, did, he didn't engage in any sexual act. There was no rape, there was no nothing. You just randomly kill Asian women, but it's because you have a sex addiction. Now, Asian makes women, sense. there's a history, like there's a history of all uh, minorities have you know experienced bad things in America, but there's a history of Asian women being targeted. Uh, there wasn't a, a law from like 1875 that said that Asian women couldn't enter into the, into the borders of the United States because it was a sexually motivated law, basically because they were enticing. So it was the stereotype was that Asian women were prostitutes and the women of the night, and so uh, they they were tempting to the American public. So they weren't allowed in the United States. So that the whole myth of the stereotype of Asian women being a certain way sexually, that that's still there, you know, that that's still there, you know. And for those families or people or, or communities who still have this sort of racial block in their head, they, they perpetuate this to their kids. They spoon feed their kids this, this bullshit about racial stereotypes against other communities. So somewhere in the back of your head, that's there. And then let's just put it all out there. The former Chino in chief really has fueled this violence, this recent violence against Asians. You're talking about, you know, you call it the, the China virus, the China virus. So any, if you guys watched any of the press, you know, we only had like five press break, breakings in five years, but um, in four years. But if you watched any of them, and when they were talking about COVID, any Asian person of Asian descent that asked him a question, he was very delusive to. Very. You know, it's the China virus because it comes from China. If it's the China virus because it comes from China, it's called the Wuhan virus. But the reason why you hate China is because the highway wouldn't go into the deal with you and you owe China money. And so this, this virus that came out just was like the best thing that ever happened to him. So you can feel this violence against Asians. And then, of course, we know that these people are sheep. And they follow everything that he says because what happened on January 6th? So, of course, you know, you can, we, we can say, you know, it happened because of the sex. No, no, it didn't happen because of no damn sex addiction, uh, 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 um, addiction. This happened because this guy, y'all, I, I, you don't know, do you? Yeah, does it make sense, does it? It makes absolutely no sense. And then I, this is, I mean, we can go down the line of, of people who are commit mass shootings and murder and they're white and they're male and they get arrested because they all do. Every last one. All of them are arrested without incident and taken downtown and booked and go to trial. Mm -hmm. After they mm -hmm. have committed atrocities. And then the victims become vilified. And you want to go back and you want to talk about when they got detention in the eighth grade and how they had a, a traffic ticket that they never paid for. And you make them the worst possible people I don't care what they did the day before, but that day they were the victim. And then you want to bring out the the, the youth pastor, uh, the person, the cafeteria lady, 
the guy from the bus stop to talk about this man's character and how, yes. you know, he just wouldn't, you know, he was a good boy. He wouldn't have done. But he did, though. But he did. But he did, though. You could say, I don't understand why he would do that. You could say that. I don't understand why he would do that. I never saw this <clears throat> behavior <clears throat> before. But I cannot sit here and deny he did that that day. I don't understand why my son did this. I would have never taught my son to do this. But he did it. Do well, they know how he was captured? I forgot. Um, let me see. I don't really think I paid attention to how he was captured. I just know that he was without injury. Um, well, of course it was without injury. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. It says that uh, this is what the um, this is what was said about the Mr. Long, the shooter. He understood the gravity of it. He was pretty much fed up, and at the end of his rope yesterday, what and yesterday was a really bad day for him. And this is what he did. This is what the captain. This is what Captain uh, Baker, Baker said. That's what Captain mm -hmm. Baker said. He understood the gravity of it. So when we go to trial, I don't want to hear he didn't know what he was doing. He was pretty much fed up. With what? With who? And at well, the just, end of his throat. Just listen to the statement. Did you hear the statement? He apparently has an issue. What he considers a sex, sex addiction and sees these locations as something that allows him to go to these places and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. And he just ended up having a really bad day. And this is what he decided to do. Well, then cut your penis off. What? What? What is that? What is... Did we do what? a part where the guy tried to cut his penis off? The guy, the Long Island killer or the Brooklyn killer or whatever his name was? Mm-hmm. He tried to cut it off. Why? Because he was... The, the, the yep. artist, the artist um, who, who killed the girl's family um, in the 30s. He attempted to cut his penis off because he was tempted. That is the craziest. Who says but, that? Okay, but here's the thing. The apologist who come in and want to make what this person did normal because this is the way I felt and I was fed up. So I have the right to go into someone's business and take their life because I was fed up. I was feeling bad that day. Now, I don't believe any of that bullshit, but this is the story that you want to tell. Mm -hmm. This is a story that you want to tell. These are the kind of kids that we're raising that that, that that can't take rejection, that you have a problem. There are a lot of men with sex addictions. We know. I'm really, really, really There's a lot of men with sex addictions that have bad days. Yes. And they don't roll up and just start spraying women. No. At a and, then, yeah, and I see when you say, here go the friends, you know. He was, a, he was very nice at Bible school. He was a Christian, you know. So are the, I mean, guy, so are the guys. He the never would have done this. Cage. I don't know what's going on. Hell out of here. And then you always want to throw somebody as a Christian. If he was a Christian, he wouldn't be killing folks. Exactly. Because because the, the commandments say thou shalt not kill, unless they don't read that part. If we try to get him off on on, on a mental disorder, what he wants to do? No, 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 Captain Baker said he understood the gravity of what he did. He was fed up and he had a bad day. Dumbest quote anybody could ever say. But it's going to help. It's going to be helpful in the end. So just dumb. So dumb. Okay, we done done this with churches. We done done it with the schools. It's so bad mm -hmm. now that we are desensitized to public shootings and mass shootings now in this country. Wow, yeah. When it's a school shooting, when Columbine happened, it was such a shock because I think mm -hmm. there had been like two school shootings prior to Columbine in the last 20 years, the 20 years prior to Columbine. When that happened, it was a shock. Because you didn't hear about, you know, these things just didn't happen. And then all of a sudden they start picking up steam. You, you were school mm -hmm. shooting every other month. Now in this country, but prior to COVID, it was a 
was like what every other week and what do you think was the change that happened I think honestly it's a generational change um I think that uh, these kids us uh our kids have more freedoms than we did and we allow the tv to raise our kids uh if we complain about content on tv but we don't turn the tv on yes. same thing with the lady did you see the lady that was crying about cardi b's video that was yes. on turn the fucking tv off why do you have your baby watching? Because Cardi B never said she's a spokesperson for children. Cardi B won't even let her own child sing her song. Listen to her own music. Because right. she has made the decision to make adult music. This is so it's adult. your job. Do you let your kids watch porn? No, because that's for adults. I mean, baby was crying. Like, full-fledged crying. But remember when Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were, did their uh, their uh, Super Bowl performance and he ripped off her paste in her bra, right? The people were saying, oh my God, this, this is horrible. My kid watched this five times. Why? 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 I didn't even see it. I, I had to watch it. Was it so quick. I was watching the Super Bowl. It's, it's, it's literally it a so quick split. That you I mean, it's like, you had and even, even, cra even crazier thing is it's a, you it's see a pasty. peach. It's a pasty around it. It's just a peach of a nipple showing. It's a pasty covering a whole areola area. You it's have a piece. to watch the recording mm -hmm. play over and over again to actually see him do it. But it happened so quick and she kept dancing and she covered herself. It happened so quick that you missed it during the live. And it was recording. a malfunction. It wasn't like she purposely was like, bow, like trying to. Mm -hmm. Right. But the point is, is that you you watched it and you let your kid watch it over and over and over and over again, but then you want to complain about what your kid saw. I don't understand. We I don't, don't censor that. our kids anymore. We are in this this age of, of course, we're in the age of information, but we also are wanting to our kids to experience everything. You cannot experience everything because you can't analyze that thing, those things in your head to make them make sense. And then your kid comes to you with all these problems. And instead of solving the problems, we put them on medication when they don't need to be. They are exposed to things that they don't need to be exposed to. We don't discipline our kids. We don't tell them no. We don't tell them, little Sally Lou, you cannot sing that song because your ass can't sing. Your voice sounds like a goat dying. <laughs> we we encourage right. the mediocre. Yeah. And I'm not saying that every every kid has to sing like Pavarotti or that every kid has to be able to dance like Alvin Ailey. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But encourage the things that your kids are good at. Thank you. Baby, that's not be baby, that's not your ministry. That's sing not for you. That's not and you. that's okay. Yeah. You can sing in the shower, but don't take that outside because mm -mm, don't take that into competition. And you can use every moment. I mean, my kids have seen things they probably shouldn't have seen. Mm -hmm. But you use that as a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. okay, you've seen this now let's talk about why this is appropriate or it's not appropriate right or whatever you just your kids is watching it and singing it and then you're like oh my kids are singing this song but the whole time you still play, you you still play, play that same radio station play it's exposure i think that's what it changed the whole thing it's exposure to all these things and then we want to talk you know Back it's, in the day when it was two live crew and they, you know, in Tipper Gore and all them, and you had to put that's when they had to put the parental. Um, but we weren't listening to that as little kids. Yeah, listen, I, mean, I didn't. Listen to that. I didn't listen to that. My yeah. mom was like, "No, we had to sneak like, and do it because we knew it was taboo. You couldn't do it. Thank you. No. We had to sneak and do it because mama was like, "Uh, no, no, I want to listen to Luke. Are you serious? And it, no, no. What no. I listen when my daughter was young." Right now, my daughter listens to jazz and she's like 23. She listens to all kinds of jazz, right? And the reason why she does is because when she was a little kid and we were in the car, yeah, we listen to the wave. And if you're from Southern California, you know what the wave is. It's just like a, a smooth jazz station, right? Mm -hmm. So my daughter was three years old and I had to go to the warehouse. Now, again, I just tell my age because there ain't no warehouse no more. I had to go to the warehouse which is a music store, and bought a CD by Chris Bodie, who is a trumpeteer for a three-year-old, okay? 
because they played this song called A Thousand Kisses Deep on the Wave all the time. That was her favorite damn song. So for years, I censored what she was able to watch and what she was able to listen to. The most risque thing that she was able to watch was Monty Python. And ain't nobody out there going out and slicing off nobody's arm like the Dark Knight on, on Monty Python. And nobody's doing that. The shit's funny, but nobody's doing that. <laughs> so yeah. I monitored what she was able to consume. And like Brandy said, everything is a teachable moment. If she came to me that, you know, something she didn't understand or something that was funny, but she would say it that was inappropriate, I'd be like, well, you can't say that. Yeah. You know, don't say that. That's simple. And so we did the same thing. Like our kids, we couldn't listen to certain things. Um, my kids can listen to certain things and we listen to the soft rock station. My kids know Journey, Eagles. And they know right. all the, they know all of those songs. Right. And we lied to the three. <clears throat> but my order to three, we had to make him his own copy of Commodore's Greatest Hits because he was wearing our outs. Like, we had to make him his own copy. <laughs> my kids listen to Uba. Uh, listen to um, Kids Bob. <laughs> It's you know, more modern than they used in the kids' bop, but I grew up listening to blue, so that's because I'm from the country. Right. But I can promise you, when it, and even some blue songs are very risky. Those blue songs, I remember my mama said, Y'all gotta go in the room. Don't listen to that. Listen. Gotta turn the radio down. Couldn't listen to Rick James. Couldn't yeah, listen to Rick James. Uh, uh, some of them songs. songs. Now that I'm older, I listen to them, I'm like, Ooh, ooh, I had no blue songs, man. They, mm. Some of the blues, when I tell you they are rich, I'm talking nasty. There's a blues song that talks about some lady in a red dress with big knees. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, talking about this lady in a red dress with big knees. It's, it's way out there. But we don't monitor what our kids say uh, and what they consume. They don't have, uh, we can't, we can no longer teach our kids um, because the, the, the school system and the government says you have to make your kids feel good at all times. They have to feel good about themselves. And I get that. You validate your kid and you boost your kid, but you don't validate your kid on everything. You don't validate their their ill their ill feelings towards their their fellow students. <coughs> bullying. Right. We we you know, your kid is a bully, yeah. but we don't want to admit that our kid is the bully. And we don't chastise our kids because that's gonna make them feel bad. But they won't you know? like and then, I told my son, I even told my son, I say, this y'all generation is some trash. of the some of the weakest kids I've ever seen in my life. Y'all are so can't nobody tell you shoot ugly. You're gonna fall out, try to kill everybody, or you're gonna cry and get on the internet. I mean, it's like your mother can't say nobody can do anything to y'all. Can't nobody tell you the truth. Can't nobody. I mean, you're so emotional. Because it makes them feel bad. Do you know? How like it's just times? emotional. You you need to know real life. I have to teach my. I'm gonna teach you real life. But that's real that's life the is. You can't do that. That's the problem. No, is that there's no consequences no. to things nowadays. There are no real consequences to actions to to poor actions. What they do is, if you're a bully at the school, they'll put you in detention. That you got to go to the council. You got to talk about it. You mm -hmm. rape somebody like Brock Turner, and you get six six months in jail if you if you've been served the six months because we don't want to mess up your career. We don't want to mm -hmm. mess your career. You got a you you got a good career ahead, good life ahead of you. We don't we don't want to mess that up for you they say. for one one incident, one night, yep. one thirty minutes of, of 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 an incident. We don't want to mess that up for you. Mm -hmm. And then there's no real consequence when you go into a church and shoot nine people. We're going to take you to Taco Bell because you might be hungry on the way down. Yeah, let's just do that. There's no real consequence when you shoot eight people in Atlanta because he was a good boy. And, you know, he he was good and he was with the youth choir. There's no real consequence when you when you travel from one state to another during a rally to go shoot two people. And we let you out on bond. If you, you travel from one state to another state, that is a federal ass crime. To go to another state to shoot two people were in something that you didn't have anything to do with because you're a good boy and your mama spoke for you. I mean, that's not even talk about, you know, someone that pissed me off. I mean, he pissed everybody off, but Zimmerman, he, he's a, he was a celebrity. Do you hear me? He was in celeb. The title of some of the things he did said 
celebrity. Yep. I'm like, wait a minute, he a celebrity? Yep. This mother is a celebrity for what he did? No consequence. He had no consequence because his dad was of high authority. He had no consequence for his behavior. And he we have it. we have made it in this country so that we can always explain away white violence. Mm -hmm. We can always explain away white supremacy, racism, bigotry, and violence. Sharon Osborne, and we this is not even what we're talking about, but Sharon Osborne, but she was on the talk in her rant. Yeah, she was <laughs> talking about Pierce, uh, Morgan, I believe his name is. What is his name? Is? Ooh, now we have to explain why Sharon Osborne went off on this rant because her friend was called out about his blatant racism against Meghan Markle and other women of color. Mm -hmm. Listen, Brandy, you're my friend. You're my cousin. Jackie, you're my friend. But if you do something wrong, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's my friend. We ain't going to talk about that. That's Here. Not, I don't want to talk about I can't defend you on if you're wrong. And I won't. But you went off on a rant defending a man against racism, uh, against black women, to a black woman. And Pierce ain't came out and said nothing. In nothing. Nothing. Then then stand up for her. Ain't said nothing. Ain't had a back or nothing. But we have to understand where she's coming from. We have to understand what she was trying to say. No, because we are apologists. We have made it okay for white people to do things without impunity. With well, with impunity. It's just okay. We can always explain why they do. He was having a bad day that day. And he was fed up because he had a sex addiction. I have an addiction to Oreo cookies, y'all. It's really bad. Every time I see a new variety and of Oreo cookies, I got right, a hold movie. on. I got a mosquito in my house. Big. Hold on, Bernie. I'm keeping this on the. I'm keeping this in the, in the recording of you. Zach, <laughs> <laughs> kill this. He can't be here. I'm scared. What did you do? Jamar, I need Jamar to come kill it. And so I'm panicking. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's having a bad day. She's having a bad day. <laughs> 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 I was like, what the hell is a skinny get in here? You know, those big ones that take yeah. that, those big ones. Wait, I mean, like I said, I was saying, like, I have an addiction to Oreo cookies, and every time they come out with a new variety of Oreo, of Oreo cookies, I gotta go buy it. Do, do I really baby? Do, do I take out violence against other fat black women who like Oreo cookies? Hell no. It ain't they fall. You ain't went in there and stole no Oreos. I ain't stole no Oreos. No. You ain't, you ain't shot up the line because you want to be in, up in the front. None, None of that. that. None of that. And it's and I know that this kind of, you know, it's reducing the, the, the issue, but that's how that's how ridiculous this is to me. Because your addiction mm -hmm. is personal. Your addiction is personal. It has nothing to do with anybody outside of you. Mm -hmm. But we explained it away by saying he had a bad day and he was fed up because of his addiction. There's no accountability there. There's no accountability. None. Nope. And that's what we do every time these things happen is we explain it away and they are not accountable for this. So when they go to court and get the sympathetic ass jury, that's exactly what happened with George Zimmerman. I don't know how the hell y'all got this recording of that 911 operator saying, go do home. not, do leave not leave him alone. Now nah, I'm going to go out there. And you deliberately go after this young man and shoot him and you walk. You know why? Because he was scared for his life. He was protecting his neighborhood. And then you make the victim the criminal. Oh, baby. Didn't they talk about him so bad? You make Oh, he was a delinquent. He was always in criminal. trouble. I mean, it was something. It was something around. Then the poor girl that they had as a witness. Oh, Thanks. she's illiterate. You can't, you can't use her. She don't know how to talk right. She don't know how to do nothing right. Look at her. She's not even speaking right. She don't, she's saying all the wrong things. Well, first of all, she's terrified. Right. Meanwhile, Zimmerman done beat on his girlfriend. Yes. He done, he done, done all the He's been a thief. 
because the, the it's all it listen it goes from here to here now you can take whatever meaning from this to this that you want to but i want you to take the real one that i'm talking about it goes from the white criminal to the person of color being the criminal it's always split you can get mad and get in the comments if you want to but this is this is the truth of what we're talking about here it's just the reality and let's talk about the other side of it if it's a man doing this and most of the time it is a white man but let's just talk about a man doing this against women then you want to talk about well well what should, well was it a you know like the question was asked early well was it a brothel we don't know it didn't say brothel on the outside it said spa i'm assuming that you do spa like shit in there you get a massage if you want to take that so massage sexually as a man, that's on you. Mm -hmm. But let's just say if it was. So the fuck what? If you paid it was. For this. You paid for that. You paid for it. You paid for a service. They didn't so offer it to you. Why does it matter? They didn't go outside and solicit you. You walked your ass in there to get a service. And that's what you got. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that I'm going to kill them because I have something wrong with me. Don't go. Yeah, go to so church. Simple. Go to confession. But we always want to talk about what the woman or what the victim has done. At the 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 waxing salon that I go to, and this is true for a lot of waxing salons now, they no longer do men. They no longer offer services to men, waxing services to men. Creepy they are used to, man. they are used to men getting aroused, some men getting aroused during the service. They're used right. to that. But a lot of the technicians are like, no, we don't do it anymore because it's out of hand. This is, it's unnecessary. Some men use that as sexual release. That's not what it's for. You are victimizing someone who is at work. That is sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. And if you go in there, you do something to you want to talk about, well, what does she do? How does she touch him? How does she do? What? Because right now she's dead. So we don't know. But it's always the victim's fault. So I don't care how they cut this up. You could say it's not racially motivated. Okay. But it's a crime against women. That's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. The I posted something on Facebook and my personal page the other day. It pissed off for a few men. And I said something to the tune of why y'all hate women so much. Do y'all even like girls? It was very general. <clears throat> and I was actually that was actually in response to someone's uh comments about Cardi B at the Grammys. And basically calling her a whore and all this stuff. And I was like, but this, but 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 you watched it though, and these are the type of people that you follow on Instagram, and you, and you like their stuff, and you always posting things about women in you know scant clothing and bikinis and almost no clothes. But you post that, but then when you want to talk about this woman who got this job, making millions of dollars, entertaining you. Is she a whore? And she's a whore. So that's what that was in response to, because I believe. And Shakespeare said it best, thou dost protest too much. Like you, 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 you talk about hate too much. You talk about these women being whores too much. I, I literally said does too much. So my question was, why do y'all hate women? And you're not the only one that said that because I said that too. I'm like, you know what? Um, you you like said girl. better than anybody. I mean, do you hate our women? Like, why, why is it that women? you have such a major problem with women? So I'm either going to question, do you even like women? If you constantly just talking about women bad or you have nothing positive. Well, and I have some women. on my timeline. When I tell you they have nothing positive to say about women. Do you even like women? I'm like, do you like women? It's fine if you don't. It's fine if you don't, but just live in your truth. Yeah, just live, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you have, you have a few people upset at you. I wouldn't be, yeah, it's it was a little heated for a minute, but I said, you know, hit, you know, if you, if it's not, if, if I wasn't talking to you and your name is not, like you say, it's not about you then. Why did you get mad? I didn't understand. Like she wasn't. Why, why, why you get so offensive? Is she not talking about I'm, you? I'm not talking to you. It's not about you. 
It's not about you. So if if your name is not in here, I'm defending men. Why are you defending men if it has nothing to do with you? I mean, the, the men who be defending are the men who like men. every man. Right. And I wasn't speaking to every man because right. it, it's not geared can. towards every man. And so if you're if you don't have that misogynistic view, then you shouldn't have been in the comments at all. And right. your first your first your first rebuttal shouldn't have been, well, women do this too. Well, well, we're not that's a different post. We can talk about that later. Why don't you post that on your page? Yeah. about women and then, and then, and then we'll we can go talk on our about topic. women on your page but on yeah. my page I need you to answer this question this is what we're talking about here and one of one of our uh, acquaintances made the comment is that when women hate men or women have issues with men we don't go out and shoot them men are not in fear of women the way that we have to fear men because that that misogynistic viewpoint and in the hate that women receive and this is every woman that women receive that will turn into violence mm -hmm. that can very very easily turn into a violent episode and that you know like in atlanta like in indianapolis because you're mad at this woman. She's weaker. How dare she be better than me? How dare she say no to me? How dare she not reciprocate, you know, my cat call? And I said, I like her and she's attractive. You can't even leave a situation after that because you don't know if that dude's going to knock you in, in the head because you denied him a dance. Mm -hmm. It's a video out of this woman. She was um, leaving a grocery store. And when I tell you, these men were flocking like to her. You could see the fear because one of the guys was recording. Now, like you fine, you know they 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 harassing her, touching on her. She's like, look, I just want to get to my car. They follow her to her car. They were trying to get in her car. Can you? That's the that's the fear that women have to live in because we can't just tell you no. She made it so clear, like, look, I have a boyfriend. I'm just I just want to go to my car, mm -hmm. and they're literally touching on her and grabbing at her and i'm like i felt so sad for her because you can see in her face she was terrified because at that point she can't speak too you got to be careful what you say because then they'll rape her she has to be careful how she moves because then they're going to take it that she's trying to fight her and it's just like nobody wanted to protect her no, no. one no not not it, one it, person it, stood I up think, and said hey I leave her alone her, it would have been later on but what was she wearing what did she say to them? Did she talk to one of the gentlemen in the store? And? And she had on some club gear, but she can wear club gear if she wants to. Listen. That doesn't mean you get to touch on her. It's and, funny and how it's okay women. for them to watch, for men to watch a Victoria's Secret's run, run, runway show and to pick up a, a, an issue of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue magazine but if a woman has a short skirt on and some heels, she's a whore. She deserves it. Nigga, you was just watching the, you was just watching the Savage Fenty show. And you don't even buy Savage Fenty. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. It's not, it's either the people of color or the woman. Mm -hmm. And heaven forbid if you're both. Yeah. Heaven forbid if you are both, because your ass is grass. You have no recourse in this country. All right, guys, we 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 can just keep talking about this for like like hours, and I'm quite sure that mm -hmm. we could put this into a part two. So what we're gonna do is we will shelve these conversations until next week or um, another show when we just talk about current events. But um, our show. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about Samuel Little. And again, Samuel Little is one of the most prolific serial killers in the United States history, probably world history. Very interesting guy. Like he, his memory was spot on with his victims. He knew almost all of his victims by image and was able to recreate their images through art. Um, and he, he wasn't caught until he was a very, very old man and he recently passed away. So we'll be talking about Samuel Little on next week's show on Black Coffee and Crime. We do thank you for joining us for our rants. As always, uh, be safe, be blessed, and enjoy the second cover. See you next week.